Hello everybody, welcome to today's Noesis Solutions webinar on Wednesday. For those of you joining us for the first time, welcome. For those of you who are joining us uh, having been on one of our previous webinars, we welcome you back. Today's topic, using the new Optimus integration with CASIS parametric modeling. And we'd like to welcome as uh, our co-host for this webinar, our friends from Friendship Systems and their uh, tool CASIS. So we're going to talk about integrating CASIS and Optimus together for doing parametric modeling. With that, let me do just a little bit of housekeeping as part of the welcome. Uh, in order for everyone to have the best sound quality possible, everyone is muted. If you are having any audio issues, we encourage you to check out there are two ways to connect with the audio voice over IP or there's a dial-in number and if you are uh, having issues that we might uh, be able to help you with there's a chat box in the lower right hand corner of your uh, screen where you can uh, ask us questions we'll be monitoring that and in fact uh, pay attention to that even if you're not having any audio issues because we're going to refer to that when we're uh, recommending that you ask questions uh, so that we can answer those at the end. Okay, so uh, taking a look at the agenda, we'll have uh, four different segments of our agenda. I'll continue this welcome. My name is John Jenkins. I'm the sales manager for the North America region for Noesis Solutions. I will give an introduction to Noesis Solutions so you have a little bit of a basis for uh, our objective in this webinar. And we will then move to an introduction of Friendship Systems. That will be handled by Mattia Brenner, who is the head of sales for Friendship Systems. After Mattia gives us an overview of uh, Friendship Systems and CASIS, we will then move into an application case by Bruno Gabaccio. He's an application engineer in our uh, no, Leuven Belgian uh, headquarters office of Noisa Solutions and he will be showing uh, the application of linking Optimus and CASIS together after Mattia talks about uh, CASIS. And from there, after we finish the application case, I will jump back in and we'll monitor a Q&A session and we'll field some questions from the group. So with that, let me jump in and do a quick introduction of Noesa Solutions. Okay, so Noesa Solutions, uh, we are the developers of the tool you're going to see a little bit more of down in our application case today. We call that Optimus. It's a process integration and design optimization tool. It's a wrapper and a, a workflow automation tool and design optimization uh, solution. We also develop uh, a tool, or we have a tool that we've developed called ID8 which is essentially the next generation and a web-based version of Optimus. Uh, these are for design space exploration, for uh, engineering optimization, and we have over uh, 2,000 installations worldwide. Okay, so for those of you who are not familiar with Optimus, Optimus is a modular software tool. It's developed to help companies capture corporate engineering processes and to develop best practices, to be able to incorporate and formalize your best practices into a standard and formalized workflow and, and an automated workflow. It, it enables you to reduce the non-value added human time that goes into uh, some or many uh, engineering processes. So it helps your engineering uh, team members, your experts, to be able to spend more of their time on the higher level uh, solving of engineering challenges rather than data tweaking and uh, uh, data passing uh, of information, letting the computer um, uh, do those links and, and make those connections. And ultimately, it uh, is designed to improve your ROI by shortening your design cycle, getting your products to market faster, while simultaneously improving your product's performance. Uh, in other words, you know, giving you better designs, smarter designs, uh, beating your competition in the uh, product performance areas. So the images across the bottom are intended to convey uh, some of the images of our 
uh, some of the modularity of the tool. Uh, working from left to right across the bottom, first and foremost, we're a process integration tool where we can take whatever engineering design and simulation tools that you're using, uh, the, the software tools that make up your engineering design and simulation processes, and wrap those into a formalized and uh, graphically represented process that can be repeated, uh, that can be uh, designed to be, um, uh, you know, highly repeatable and highly robust and uh, form the basis for the design optimization modules that come later. And speaking of, you know, moving across, once you get a process uh, integrated and, and a workflow automated through the process integration module, then you can start doing things like uh, uh, standard design of experiments you can build on those design of experiments by taking the information in your design space and building uh, mathematical meta models or response surface models, uh, which enable you to be able to really uh, speed up, radically speed up your engineering simulation processes to the tune of hundreds of times or thousands of times faster uh, by being able to uh, generate uh, tens and, and hundreds of thousands of uh, of simulations in the time that it takes you to do one or two uh, simulations depending on the complexity of your simulations and from there you can get into uh, 1d and and uh, you know two-dimensional uh, multidisciplinary uh, optimization uh, multi-physics kind of optimization robustness and reliability studies and so on and so forth so we have tools in each of these areas and this just kind of covers you know, some of the main components, but this is, gives you a quick overview of Optimus uh, and what it can do for you. So to summarize uh, the, the last slide, Optimus helps our customers shorten their design cycle. Our studies of our customers show that shortening their design time by an average of 30% uh, reducing non-value-added engineers' time. Uh, no matter what software, what CFD software you use, design software you use, and especially today, we're going to be showing how it can help you if you're combining uh, with a tool uh, such as CASIS. And today, we're going to be showing you CASIS parametric modeling. The next couple of slides uh, gives you a quick overview of some of our uh, customers by you know some of the gross segments that we work in uh, here aerospace and defense some of our automotive and ground transportation customers uh, electronics and uh, consumer products and the like and lastly a uh, sort of cross-section of a number of different industries, other customers of Noisa Solutions and uh, users of Optimus. Okay, well, we've, uh, we've arrived at this part in the webinar where we're gonna dig in uh, for what you came here for. I'm gonna turn the time over to Mattia Brenner. He's the head of sales for Friendship Systems. He's been with Friendship Systems for a little over 10 years. Uh, right now, he's the head of sales. Previously, he was the pre-sales in, in pre-sales and engineering, and he's a trained naval architect. So we'll uh, let him first of all introduce Friendship Systems, the company, and talk a little bit about Casus, uh, the tool that we'll be uh, demonstrating here today in conjunction with uh, Optimus. And right after Mattia, rather than me uh, in, interrupting the flow here, we're going to turn it right over and have Bruno Gorbaccio, who is a Noesis Solutions application engineer, who's uh, worked with Mattia on this test case, on this uh, application case. And uh, Bruno will jump in and take it from there. So Bruno, as soon as Mattia ends his segment, uh, we'll let you jump right in, and then I'll come back and pick up when we get to the Q&A section. So, Mattia, take it away. Thank you for the introduction, John, and hello also from my side to all participants here. 
Today I would like to talk about our software tool Cases and how it can be used as a geometry engine in combination with Optimus to run design studies and shape optimization. So the target of what we're trying to achieve is automation of the design process and nowadays there is a very high demand in performance for engineering products and a very good way of reaching that demand is through optimization. And in general, optimization or automated design processes can lead to better and optimized designs, of course, it, but it can also reduce the design cycles, shorten the development times, and what is also important, it can increase the knowledge about how the product is behaving due to changes in parameters uh, and things like that very early on in the design process, which is a great help for decision making uh, later on in the process. So in order to be able to run such automated design processes, we need a couple of components, which include a simulation tool that can provide the performance information that we're interested in to judge if our product reaches the level of performance that we require. We need a driver of the optimization process that can trigger all the tools in the process chain and provide the algorithms for DOE and optimization that are necessary. This is handled very well by Optimus. And finally, we need a suitable CAD tool that is able to produce all the different geometry variants that we would like to analyze throughout the process. And this final point is what we're trying to address with our tool cases. So you just heard that Cases is mainly a CAD tool and I'm sure all of you already have a CAD tool in operation. So you might ask, why do I need another CAD system? And in our experience, uh, most of the typical bottlenecks that people encounter when they're trying to set up and run a design exploration or optimization process are actually related to the handling of the geometry. So for example, with the traditional CAD systems that they're using, geometry variation is often problematic and changing parameters of the model, for example, um, leads to failure to regenerate the geometry or some other errors in the geometry. Another important point are constraints. So we would like our uh, geometry and also the result of the optimization to fulfill certain constraints typically, for example, due to manufacturing or packaging, and we need to consider that. Also, sometimes there is a bottleneck between departments. So simulation engineers that run the simulations and the optimizations depend on the CAD department to provide geometry models and geometry variants. And apart from it being a bottleneck in itself, often these models are also made with different purpose in mind to create manufacturing drawings, for example, and the quality of these CAD models might not be suitable for the simulation so that uh, some preparation steps are needed uh, to make the geometry clean enough or defeature it uh, so that it can be used in the simulation or in the uh, mesh meshing tool that comes before the simulation itself. So these are the points that we're trying to address uh, with our tool cases. So it's not a general purpose mechanical CAD tool as a replacement to these other typical tools, but it's rather a very specialized CAD tool that has a strong focus on the parametric modeling, specifically of complex geometries that often involve freeform surfaces that are not so easy to parametrize in traditional CAD systems. And you can see some examples here on the right from turbo machinery or powertrain, maritime, aerodynamics applications. And we not only want to parametrize the geometry, but we want to be able to create variants of that geometry in a very robust way without any failure or problems. And the parametrization that we were using here for the variation should be very efficient, which means uh, have a high flexibility so that we can cover 
uh, all the changes that we would like to analyze using as little parameters as possible because the effort for the optimization scales up with the number of parameters. And what we are exporting from our uh, geometry model should be simulation ready, so there might be some automated uh, steps to prepare the geometry when it's exported, so that can be used directly for meshing and simulation. And finally, we mentioned this already, constraints. We need to be able to monitor constraints if our uh, geometry variants fulfill these constraints or to build these constraints directly into the model uh, so that all the variants that we're creating automatically fulfill these constraints. So this is uh, something about the capabilities of cases to create uh, such geometry parametrizations for the purpose of variation. And now uh, I would like to go into the, directly into the GUI of cases to show how a geometry model is prepared to be used in the Optimus optimization process. So let me change uh, into, the, into the GUI. So the steps that we have to follow are pretty straightforward. So here we have our parametric model in the graphical use interface of cases. And in this model, we have defined uh, several design variables to control the shape. And for each of these design variables, we can also specify a range in which we would like to allow uh, changes of the, of the value of this variable. So here we have our lower and upper bound. And what we have also defined is an export, in this case in Geom Turbo format, to export the um, main blade and the splitter blade and the hub and shroud geometries. And then we can export a so-called FSC file, which is a uh, control script that launches cases and runs several commands. And when we're exporting it here from the pr uh, project, we will get a set command to set the value of each design variable that we specified in the project. So let's save this. And if we look at this uh, FSC file, we see that uh, it opens the project and then we set the value for each uh, of the design variables and the value that we have here in the set command is the current value and here as a comment we also have the ranges that we specified beforehand and we have that for each design variable. So now we've seen how the geometry is prepared for the optimization process and later on we will see how the complete optimization process uh, is set up and runs then. And now I would like to quickly talk about the case study that we're demonstrating here today. This is a compressor wheel optimization and I would like to talk about the geometry setup on the cases side. So for the modeling process, we start uh, the modeling by defining the hub and shroud contour, parametrizing them and generating the hub and shroud surfaces. Then we create the uh, camber surface for the main blade, which um, is defined by a camber line on the hub uh, and the camber line on the shroud. And these camber lines are derived from a theta or wrap angle distribution. We can also use other distribution like a beta or blade angle distribution. And uh, these two camber lines are connected with the surface which gives us our mean camber surface for the main blade. And in the next step we create uh, in a similar way the uh, main, the sorry, the mean camber surface for the splitter blade. The only difference here is that the camber lines on hub and shroud are not independently parametrized but they are dependent from the main blade uh, camber lines. So now we can apply thickness to the um, main blade camber surface and create the outer surface of the blade. 
and this thickness comes from a parametrized thickness distribution and the thickness is applied normal uh, to the mean camber surface. We do the same thing for the splitter blade and then we have all our surfaces uh, defined and we can finalize things by uh, creating a solid for, for the hub and closing off the blades and creating fillets at the roots of the blades and then we have one sector of our impeller with one main blade and one splitter blade which we can then multiply in circumferential direction to, com to create the complete solid for the impeller. And this uh, geometry model might have, I don't have the exact number in mind, but a total of maybe 30 parameters and from these uh, total parameters we have selected five for our optimization process here and I would like to show you these parameters one by one. The first one is the main blade angle at the leading edge at the hub and you can see at the far right how changing that parameter influences the geometry and in the middle in the diagram we can also see the influence of the parameter on the theta distribution at the hub. And in the same way, we also change the main blade angle at the leading edge at the shroud. Again, we can see the changes to the 3D geometry as well as to the theta distribution at the shroud in the diagram. The third parameter is a bit more detailed or localized. We can see in the magnification here um, how this parameter, which is the leading edge shape factor, changes the shape of the leading edge from a let's say circular shape to a more elliptical shape. The next parameter is the leading edge offset at the shroud for the splitter blade and as you can see in the animation this basically controls the distance between the leading edge of the splitter blade uh, and the main blade. And our final parameter is the trailing edge thickness at the shroud for the splitter blade. Again, in the magnification, you can see how that parameter affects the geometry. And in the diagram in the middle, we can see uh, the effect of the parameter on the thickness distribution. The diagram that is being modified there is the thickness distribution at the trailing edge going from hub to shroud. So these are the parameters that we defined and how that is used in the optimization comes up next. This concludes my presentation and next up is Bruno who will show you how this use case is handled in Optimus. Of course I will be around and I'll be happy to answer any questions during the Q&A session at the end of the webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Mattia, for the detailed explanation about cases. Hello, everyone. Um, in this presentation, in this part, we will see how to handle everything inside of Optimus and how to run a complete CFD analysis uh, from the geometric uh, changes to um, the extraction of the CFD results. So um, we saw how to change the geometry inside of KSS. So in this analysis, we will use KSS as our, um, our CAD software. Then we will mesh this geometry in order to, to run a computational fluid dynamic analysis. And afterward, we will just run um, some post-processing to extract the dedicated scalar values or uh, even some, some pictures. As we saw earlier, from KSS, we will have five input parameters, uh, so five geometrical inputs. And uh, we can see here the nominal value and the range that we will, uh, that we will use. We will also add uh, the mass flow directly coming from the, the CFD analysis. So from KSS, actually, this is the tree that you, uh, you see from the interface. And, um, and you, you may ask, uh, how can I retrieve all of these parameters inside of, um, of Optimus? Well, it's pretty easy because 
the interface will actually mimic this uh, this structure and every parameter that you can see in this uh, in this tree instead of cases well you can actually see each one of them inside of um, of the optimus interface and so afterward what you can do is just to use some uh, some filter here and there to to go directly to the type of parameter that you want to um, to retrieve inside of optimus we will see this later on. And then once we retrieve our parameter, in this case we would like to um, to go afterward to a, a measure. So we choose here to extra to export our geometry to a, a geometry format. So what do we have to do? We just have to indicate the path of the, um, the batch application. Um, and in order to, uh, to respect the sequentiality, we just want to indicate what is before this, uh, this box. So in this case, I got my, uh, my control file, I got my project, my KSS project .fdb, and then what is expected for Optimus. Well, actually, it's just the, the GM Turbo format file, which is expected. For the, the output, uh, well, for the output, we want to retrieve the actual thrust, the torque, the power, and the absolute total pressure ratio. Um, it's always good to, to keep in mind what do I want to do afterwards. So in this case, because we are dealing with a, a compressor, we might want in the future to actually maximize this, um, this scalar output uh, in order to, uh, to increase the um, the ratio of our, uh, of our compressor. Okay, let's uh, let's get to Optimus now, and let's see how to build this complete workflow from scratch. All right, so this is the Optimus interface. Um, the main window will be where we will build the workflow. On the right side, that will be the icons of several software that we will use in order to, to build our workflow. And on the left side, this is just the workspace uh, indicating where is my project, um, how many workflows do I, do I have, how many methods, how many models, and so on and so on. So um, let's first start with the, the card part, so the cases part. To do so, we just find here the icon corresponding to cases. So this is the input of cases. If I double click on it and I load my control file here, I'm going to see instantaneously all my parameters available in my, um, in my file. So then we can just retrieve the corresponding, um, the corresponding input. So we saw that we want three parameters from the, um, from the, the main blade and we want two parameters from the, uh, the splitter. So if we just use this, um, these filters, uh, we saw that we wanted the, the shape factor coming from this blade. So we just add the shape factor here. Um, it was also um, of interest to retrieve the, um, the data up this one. So we got one angle. We also wanted the same for the shroud. So the shroud is there. I got my three parameters from the blade. If I go to the, the splitter, um, for the splitter, I was interested in the, um, in the shift. So the shift was in the thickness, shift position here. And in the thickness, I wanted to retrieve the thickness of this one, of the shroud. And so here it is. I got my first definition of my uh, my input. So here actually they are grouped. What I can do is also to ungroup them in order to um, to see them in detail. So I can see here that I got my five uh, my five inputs. And what we will do next? So next uh, we will uh, we will add the action. So what we call the action in Optimus. It's um, 
where we will launch the KSS uh, the KSS application. So here I do the same um, the same manipulation. I just take the icon, I drop it inside of this window. Um, what I expected here, if I go inside, I see that I got four fields, and we saw earlier that we want so the case application, the path to the case application, we want the um, input file, the project, and the export. So actually, we need three files, so this file and two more. So we will just add two more files inside of this window. We will link them. Okay, so if we just find in this case the FDB here, so this is our binary file which is the, the project from, uh, for KSS. The export in this case will be a Geom Turbo. So I got my Geom Turbo file, which is there. And this is it. So this is the first part of my, uh, my workflow. Modification of the CAD uh, by KSS and then an export to Geom Turbo. So now I just have to, uh, to fill in the, the field. So Here the value, uh, I just have to, um, to put the corresponding file. Uh, for the project, it was the FDB. For the export, I just have my, uh, my Geom Turbo file. And for my application, I just indicate the path of my application, which is the batch, um, the batch executable of cases. And here we go. Here we got the complete uh, the workflow. Okay, so now that this is done, we need to go uh, to the, the mesh part. So um, I got my Geom Turbo and now I'm expecting a meshing. So if we take our, uh, our CFD measure here, what is uh, expecting uh, was expect what is, what is expected from this application. Well, we expect um, a TRB file, a jump turbo, and uh, then after the meshing, we expect a mesh file. So here I connect my jump turbo, and I also expect so in output, I will have my mesh, and I'm also expecting. Um, a template file from my, uh, my mesh, which is a TRB. So I connect everything together. I just load my corresponding file here. Okay. Same goes for the output. I got my, uh, my output mesh. And here I just fill in the dedicated field. And this is it. So the, the second step is done with my, um, the second step is done in my workflow. Now, once the, the mesh is done, I will go directly to the, um, the CFD analysis. So first, uh, we saw that we modified the, the mass flow. So we will also have to enter an input interface for this um, DCFD software. Inside of this input, we will just load our project, in this case, which is a, a .iec. And we just select our mass flow, and we can see here several, uh, several filters. We just take the mass flow, we add it to our workflow, and we are done. Um, in this case, because it's a bit uh, specific, I will have to make sure that our, 
our mesh is generated before we go inside of this analysis. So to do so, I will create what we call the temporary variable. And the point of this variable is really to make sure that all of this part is done before we change uh, anything in my project. Because I want my mesh file to be in uh, to be generated before I'm going inside of this project. Before because here I will link my uh, my mesh file all together with the rest and I want to link the the new one obviously. And so here um, that was the EIGG. I just want to retrieve a fixed scalar value, which would be in this case this uh, this 12.2, and that's the fifth field. Here we go. So CAD is modified. The mesh is generated here. So I got my file. Then I'm modifying the the mass flow instead of the um, the CFD project. Uh, what we have to do next is to go inside the the, um, the CFD solver. So we take our CFD solver here. Um, what do we have in input? We have this project. So we just link it. In output, we are expected. We are expecting. Um, so in this case, we will have two um, two outputs, two type of output file. We will have a summary file, which will be here our summary interface, and we also want to retrieve some pictures. And for this dedicated uh, post processing, we will use um, a type of post processing which is expected a macro from the from the user. So we got two types of output. Here we got the summary, which is a, a dot .mf in this case. I got my scalar output. And in the second uh, the second branch, in the second branch, I just load my uh, my macro that I done specifically for this case. And the software will just read the macro and uh, retrieve the corresponding picture file and um, and also the scalar output. So I got here, I got my um, my free um, my free pictures, and I also got one scalar output. So um, basically, here everything is done for the automation. I just have to uh, to make sure that all the fields are filled in. So here it was the summary file. So I checked this box with the .mf, and for the uh, the macro, I enter my post process. And basically, here we are we are done. So this is it for this uh, this automation part. And now we will see what we uh, where we can go from there. So the automation part inside of Optimus is done. That was the really the only tedious part that the user has to do because you need to drop, you need to really build the workflow manually, you need to um, to take every icon to make sure that the files are well generated and so on. But that was the only one uh, and now everything will be uh, will be fully automated. So now if I want to launch 1000 experiment, I can just do it in one click and everything will be automated. So we got the um, the changes in the in the CAD in the geometry from KSS. We uh, then go to the mesh part, and afterward we uh, we go to the flow analysis and uh, the corresponding post processing in order to retrieve in our case um, scalar values and also pictures. So what to do after this automation? That's a, that's a good question, and that's the type of question that everybody um, everybody is asking after all. Indeed, what do I want to do? Do I want to do a sensitivity analysis? Maybe I want to, to see the impact um, between the input and output, and 
starting from there, maybe I, I will be able to, to reduce the size of my, my problem. Maybe all the, end of the input are not of interest. That could be a, a possibility. Um, do, am I interested in, um, in the physics uh, of my system? How is it reacting? Do I want to do a space exploration, design, design exploration? Um, for to do so in Optimus, there are several tools, but uh, that's really up to the user. Or do I want to build a, what we call the, a surrogate model or a response surface model in order to um, really use a mathematical model and not to go directly um, for the simulation, which can be time consuming? Or do I want to do an optimization? either on my response surface or directly uh, using this um, using the, the flow simulation. That's some uh, some questions that everybody has to ask after the, the automation part. So in our case, well let's um, let's see a bit what we want to uh, to achieve. Uh, first let's talk about the budget of um, of this analysis. Um, indeed we are dealing with a computational fluid dynamic which can be rather time consuming. So if we go from, uh, if we take into account the time uh, necessary to um, to do one complete workflow, so from the geometrical change in KSS to the, the retrieving of the results, um, this takes approximately two hours on a, a regular machine and sequentially. So indeed, this is rather time consuming and um, maybe I don't want to, uh, to spend too much calculation on this. Um, but I'm, I'm interested in a, a sensitivity analysis because I want to understand better how my system is working and maybe um, from there I would be able to reduce the, the size and well to understand better what will be the, um, the input uh, having a, a huge influence over my output. And because of the time cons because of the time that my, um, my analysis takes, I want to build an accurate um, response surface model. And to do so, it appears that um, the best strategy would be to go for an adaptive design of experiment, which is the type of um, the design of experiment available in Optimus. So let's talk a bit about um, ADOE. Uh, standing for adaptive design of experiments. So the goal here is really to capture as much information as possible in a, um, in a small amount of computation. We can see here the example with a, a double bump uh, where on one side we did a um, um, regular lighting hypercube of 1000 experiments. So this is just the, the sampling used. And with only 70 experiments, we see that, well, ADOE managed to capture more or less the same behavior with many experiments, uh, with many less experiments. So in our case, that's exactly what we will uh, we will try to do. We will try to to really fix a small budget, and from there, trying to capture as much information in, as much information as I can in my uh, in my design space. Um, all the ups and downs available and trying not to do a, a calculation when there is no interest, meaning in a, in a valley, for example. So let's get back to Optimus. Um, this is the same analysis, just um, a different project where an adaptive design of experiment has, uh, has already been run. So if we edit this method here, we can see that uh, it was an ADOE of 60 experiments. Um, and now we will see what we can learn from these 60 experiments uh, thanks to the several post-processing available in Optimus. So if we right-click post-process, um, we will first start with a sensitivity analysis. Um, so here in this, um, in this table, we are mainly focusing on the upper right side, this side here, where we can see in column the output parameter, so the actual thrust, the torque, the power, and so on. And here, the rows, there are the, um, the five uh, geometrical inputs plus the mass flow. So if we go for this, uh, this rectangle here, 
we can see that um, this input is highly um, is of high importance on my uh, my pressure ratio here, and um, indeed this uh, Pearson coefficient uh, in this table is going to minus one to one, so uh, minus one and one being the highest um, correlation, linear correlation, and zero meaning that it's um, there is no linear correlation. So if we see this um, this input here, 0 0.8 is one of the is actually the um, the highest uh, coefficient that we got and we can see that the two angles are quite of importance in this analysis comparing to the um, the rest the shift factor and um, the thickness and the shift they are really apparently they are uh, they are not what Let's say they are not linearly correlated with um, with this uh, this output. If we go for a scatter, let's first see what uh, what information can I have from my correlation scatter. Indeed, we see that what we got from the two angle here, we got some tendencies here here and there, which are almost linear but we can see some some particularities here we can see some points which are a bit uh, a bit strange and we will see later on how to deal with them so most of my points here are linear which confirms the um, the coalition values that we saw earlier so sensitivity okay we saw we got two angles of interest but now um, should I uh, should I build the model directly on that? Well, we, we we saw that we might have some points which are a bit strange, and we might have a closer look to that because if we build the model directly on these 60 points, we might take into account some um, some non-feasible or non-physically uh, meaningful points. So let's see how we can deal with this. So here, if we go for uh, a parallel coordinate, for this post-processing, it's really useful if we want to uh, to act dynamically on um, on a, an input or an output. So um, every axis represents one input. Well, every axis represents one parameter. We got all the inputs here, and then we got all the output there, the scalar output. I'm um, I'm just talking here about the scalar output. So we can actually play a bit with this uh, this axis if you want to act dynamically. So let's keep this um, this post processing here, and we will also display some picture because what we um, we retrieved and we still did not speak about it is that from our post-processing software we are actually able to retrieve pictures directly inside of Optimus and this is pretty useful because here with the slider I can go from one experiment to another and so if I'm keeping this picture here I can actually see that well if I'm displaying this and also a summary um, I will see rather quickly that I might have some issues in my um, in my CFD analysis. So I got here one summary, one uh, picture plot, which is in this case just the the static pressure of my turbocharger, and a parallel coordinate. And here I want to first see why do I got this um, this part this singularity is here. So I'm just going to to filter the absolute pressure descending on the summary here, and then I'm going to link this plot to the two others, and we will see if we can identify this uh, these singularities. So here we see that actually 
nothing has converged in this uh, in this plot, and that's that's uh, that's what we what we can see. That's the repercussion here on the um, on the parallel coordinate. And if we go for all the um, the experiments here, we can see that nothing is great. Yeah, and then then everything is all right. That's, that means that during our CFD analysis, some experiments, all of this just did not converge. So they are not of interest if we want to build a model after all, because the model would just be nonsense. So if we just unselect that, and so we will take this experiment to this one, and we will just take the valid experiments of my uh, my design of experiment. So I got my valid experiment, and now I know that if I want to build a model, everything would be alright because I just got physical and meaningful um, data. And now the question is, what type of model do I build? And well, the cool thing with Optimus is that you got um, some adaptive uh, algorithm such as ADOE to help you um, re um, defining a, a correct design of experiments, but you can also use for the model what we call the best model. And with the best model, it will automatically choose for you which model suits the, um, the data the best. So if we just apply it, so we got 51, uh, 51 points, and in the post-processing, we can see here which model has been used um, among all the models available in Optimus. And we see that for each um, for each output, the model is uh, is changing. So here we got an optimal RSM, um, we got uh, an RBF model for the the torque, and we can actually see here the um, the uh, the metric, what's the um, the coefficients? Uh, so the closer to one, the better, obviously. So here we got 0 0.85 for the RBF. For uh, the optimal RSM, here we got 0 0.88, and so on and so on. For the power, it's also an RBF with uh, 0 0.85, and yeah. So here, thanks to best model. Even if we don't really know the physics uh, behind the system, we are guaranteeing that um, the, um, the algorithm we just choose the, um, the model that suits this uh, output the best. And so in our case, because the, um, the, computation, the computations takes, uh, take some time, we might want to, to run the optimization on the model and then to, to check the results only on the on the simulation. So if we want to do so, we uh, we can in Optimus. We we just select in our case the the optimization algorithm. So either we take some gradient based algorithm which are more for local analysis, or we take um, genetic algorithm. In our case, we will take a genetic one because we will want we will run it directly on the um, on the model and we want to maximize our absolute total pressure ratio and here we just have to specify all right I want to um, to run it on the best model I apply it and this is it and here my optimization on the model has already run Okay, uh, this is John Jenkins back again. I'd like to thank uh, Mattia uh, for your presentation as well as Bruno for bringing that together and showing us the um, the coupling of these uh, tool great two great tools, Cases and Optimus together. We'll be doing this uh, application case. Mattia, I'm going to turn to you now, and, and uh, this next question says. Can I import my existing CAD model for optimization in cases? Yeah, that's a very good question, John. Let me start by saying that there are two basic ways of doing geometry variation in cases. 
So either you create a parametric model from scratch completely in cases and define the whole geometry by parameters or as an alternative you import an existing geometry in a generic CAD format like for example IGES or STEP and this model of course will not be parametric but uh, we can then use several different deformation or morphing methods to parameterize changes to the original geometry. Of course each of these two methods has advantages and disadvantages so the parametric method requires uh, more time investment to prepare the model but it will give you more flexibility and detailed control over your geometry. The deformation approach on the other hand is much more quick to set up and get rolling with an optimization but it is less flexible and controlled in the way the geometry is changed. Maybe one additional thing to say about the parametric approach is that if you already have a parametric template model for the geometry that you're importing or the type of geometry that you're importing, we can also set up an automated fitting process to adjust the parameters of the model to match the imported geometry as much as possible. All right, thank you. Very, very well explained, uh, Mattia. I appreciate that. Uh, let me uh, keep, you, keep you rolling here with this next one. Um, so how does CASIS make sure that my geometry model is suitably prepared for an automated meshing process? That sounds like it's an, an excellent question and, and one that I'm looking forward to hearing how you tackle that one, Mattia. So yeah, that's an interesting question as well. Um, first of all, you have to make sure that you supply the most suitable geometry format to your grid generator. In cases we support NURBS formats like STEP, IGES, SAT or Parasolid, as well as tessellated formats like STL. And all of them are possible in a few variations or flavors that allow to include additional information. But we also support special formats like the Geom Turbo that we saw before in the case study or the ANSYS TurboGrid format, for example. And users can even easily create their own custom exports through our scripting environment. Apart from the format, another important point is the identification of geometry patches through unique IDs. And this allows these patches to be directly addressed in the grid generator in a consistent way across the variation that we're running. For example, to assign different mesh settings or boundary conditions Finally, you have to make sure that everything is clean and watertight, of course, and we have automated procedures to ensure that for our surface and tessellated formats within cases. So this is set up basically once for a specific geometry model and this um, procedure is then repeated automatically for all the variants that we're creating. Okay. Thank you very much. That was uh, excellent and, and uh, very complete. This comes up fairly regularly or some variation of this. Can I get an evaluation or a free license uh, uh, to demonstrate? Uh, I, I can't answer for uh, friendship uh, systems and I'll ask them to respond to the, the, the person asking this question offline if the question is for them because all it says is, can I get a free evaluation or a demo license? But as far as uh, Noesis Solutions and Optimus, yes, we are definitely open to uh, evaluation licenses. Uh, we do like to work very closely with you to make sure that you have all the support you need in being able to uh, fully, uh, fully vet that license and, and make sure it's going to work for you, or if it, it you know, is, is not suitable for you. So, but we do uh, offer 30-day uh, evaluation licenses. Let me, uh, let me give you this page, which first of all gives you the uh, Noesis Solutions uh, website, which is www.noesissolutions.com. And also our uh, main information email uh, address, it's info at noesissolutions.com. 
uh, you'll be able to see on our website many, many uh, webinar recordings like this one. You, so please feel free to go out there and click on those and request uh, uh, that download and access to those uh, webinars. If there's a webinar you'd like to see and it's not on there, you might send a message to info and just ask us about a particular application or a particular software solution. Uh, one other comment I would like to make as we're getting close to the tail end of this is that we're uh, doing these webinar on Wednesdays on a regular basis and we're always interested in making sure that the application cases that we're doing are the ones that you want to see. So if there's one that you haven't seen, if there's one that you would like to see, uh, shoot us a note. Use this email address. Uh, if we have already done it, we'll certainly point you to where you can see it. If we haven't done it, we will uh, definitely look into uh, putting something together for a future webinar Wednesday. Uh, we thank you for your questions. We thank you for your participation and your attendance and look forward to having you on a future webinar on Wednesday by Noesa Solutions.